Do you like trains? Trains, trains, trains. Well, I highly suggest you head over to redhottrains.com. They provide high quality model scale trains that replicate the looks of well-known trains from Melbourne, Sydney, and all over Australia. These model trains are the real deal. They aren't the paper or cardboard type ones. These red hot trains are specifically made to have as a proper ornament. They are perfect for customization and drawing your graffiti on, and overall a great display piece. And of course, if you use the discount code REDHOTUFO, you'll see a train carriage sitting on your shelf within the week. And of course, you get a 10% discount on your order. Go to redhottrains.com. Let's talk about the top 10 graffiti mistakes. Number one, picking up a can of paint and not checking where the spray hole is on the cap and then spraying it on your face or spraying it on you or spraying in your direction. It happens to the best of us. Believe it or not, even the pros somehow get this wrong and it definitely is a big mistake. You'll find that most caps have a different colored circular circle around where the spray comes out just to let you know where the spray is gonna come from. Moving on to mistake number two, trying to add too much style into your hand style. If you're adding crowns and underlines and comma marks everywhere, dots, you know, random stuff like halos, circles, stars, adding too much to your tag is just a big mistake because you're making it look too busy and therefore it makes you look like that you don't know what you're doing. Mistake number three, not cleaning your caps out after you've finished. If you have left caps on your cans after you've finished doing a piece or whatnot, you'll be upset to find out when going back to use those cans another day that the paint might be dried up and clogged in the cap. So you not cleaning out your cap after you're finished is a big mistake. Mistake number four, leaving your scrap cans at the spot. Doing graffiti is one thing, but littering is something else. Do not litter, man. Come on. You want to try keep this spot nice and chill. You don't want to lead a bad name for the graffiti writers that hit spots. Sure, society is already upset that we're doing graffiti, but they'll be even more upset if you're leaving your aerosol cans and your rubbish behind. There's a lot of other things that could happen when leaving aerosol cans out in the open. If there's gas in them, they could explode and could create fires, or they could even start fires in another way. This is a big mistake. Let's head on to mistake number five. Before I get into that, please let me know in the comment section if you are enjoying these videos, and be sure to follow me on Instagram. So graffiti mistake number five would be buying cheap paint and expecting your work to come out perfect. Expecting to get a really good and perfect result using crappy paint is just a big mistake in of itself. And that goes for any graffiti supply in general. If you get a crappy product, expect a crappy outcome of your work. Mistake number six would be trying to force yourself into a certain type of style that you probably can't pull off. See, personally, I have done this many times in the past. I've seen a type of style that I wanted to try and it just did not work for me but trying to force yourself into teaching yourself how to do a certain thing and how to pull off a certain style is just forcing something that has to come naturally. The biggest mistake of this is you won't learn if you are forcing yourself to do something. Mistake number seven would be not shaking your cans in mobs before you leave the house. You don't wanna be going out there and not be prepared. You don't wanna be out there shaking cans, rattling cans, rattling mop, making a whole bunch of noise and drawing unnecessary attention to yourself. Not getting prepared properly before you leave your house or wherever you are is a big mistake. Graffiti mistake number eight. When you're just starting out, starting off with a famous graffiti writer's name. I see this all of the time. A lot of people are using the word Sano as their first ever graffiti tag. For one thing, that is a very toy thing to do, a very beginner thing to do, so fair enough. But at the same time, it is a big mistake. You have to have your own name in the graffiti world. Copying off someone else's name or even copying their name and altering it a little bit is just a big mistake. Graffiti mistake number nine not committing to hitting a certain spot that you've been thinking about for a long time. So just say, for example, you're walking home and there's this sign that's been looking you in the face for weeks on end and you've thought, I'm going to hit that with either a sticker or a tag and then you just never do it. That is a mistake in itself. You have to take that opportunity. And in a lot of graffiti writers' eyes would consider that a mistake. Graffiti mistake number 10. When in a closed off environment, not wearing a mask or a restaurant 
respirator and inhaling too much of the paint fumes. Now in hindsight, you'll be fine if you're doing it once or twice. But in the long run, if you're doing it as a long-term thing, the spray paint and all the fumes in the air will eventually get to you. They will screw up your lungs. They'll do a bunch of nasty stuff. So if you have a practice area that's inside and that's a closed off environment, definitely not wearing a respirator is a big mistake. Make sure you go over to blankslaps.com and use the discount code UFO for 10% off your entire order. You won't be disappointed. Blank Slaps provide graffiti supplies and of course, blank eggshell stickers. And you also have the option to get custom eggshell prints. So you know blankslaps.com has everything you need for the sticker game. Link in the description below.